Attention everyone, today you are on a very special mission. Welcome aboard. Today you are in no ordinary flight. This is a bomber plane and you have been assigned on a mission. And your mission is to target the enemy military installations. For that you have been given heavily loaded bombs on your plane and you are supposed to release these bombs at the right time so that the military target is destroyed. Make sure you are successful in your mission and you arrive home safely. So in case you do not know when to drop those bombs, do not worry guys. I am here, your master teacher for physics at Vedantu and I am going to help you out with projectile motion. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Streyas and many of you already know me but for all the new timers out here, welcome aboard on this very special journey and today's last problem will be how to drop this bomb, when to drop this bomb so that the military installation gets completely destroyed all right so we are going to have a very amazing amazing time out here right now because we are going to do projectile motion all right so welcome aboard guys so i have uh, completed my mechanical engineering i've done my btech from nit nagpur my all india rank in iit was 3900 in case you do not know that and i almost scored really 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 well in physics in iit all right so that's a small intro about me and in case you are a new time user do not forget to subscribe our channel for more amazing stuff and do not forget to like the video if you have enjoyed my teaching and obviously do not forget to share the channel with all your friends so let me just welcome everyone hello krito anumit anka achyut devashi madhvi welcome welcome everyone thank you thank you achyut Thank you, Anumit. Good evening. Hi, Chinmay. Hi, Priti. Hello, Abhishek. Hello, hello, Sanskar. Hello, Uday. Hello, Venu. Hi, Sanvi. Hi, Satish. Hi, Deepak. Hello, Shreyas. Okay, somebody with my name. Hi, Thor. So, a lot of action heroes out here. Okay, hi, Solution Channel. Hello, welcome, welcome. Hello, Revan. Hello, Baitni. Hello, Jumna. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, what are we going to do today? Well, Uday, don't worry, you'll get the flash extract very soon. Yes, you will uh, get it very soon. So stay tuned on our Telegram channel. You will get all the, yes, extracts on that Telegram channel. Not Sometimes it might come out on the description link below, but sometimes it is going to be, or rather I would say every time it will be sent on the Telegram channel. So it's very important that you are on that Telegram channel. I'll give the link in a bit, but remember that so for those of you who do not know what these flash extracts are so these are the concise summary with all the formulas definitions theory etc in a concise form for your revision we have prepared this so make sure you go through these flash extracts once you get them on the telegram link today we are going to do projectile motion and a lot of movies yes have incorporated projectile motion in different ways like this Hulk jumping out here. He's also doing projectile motion. Hello Deepak. Wow. Love from Nepal. Yes, Abhishek. It's Hulk. Yes, Madhvi. For more problems, you need to visit drills. Drills is the solution Madhvi. Understand. In drills, we conduct a lot of problems. So here it's more of theory and I'm going to solve problems. Sometimes I'm going to give you quizzes. So understand physics may it's never the quantity of problems. If you have been told that you should solve a lot of problems in the class, then guys let me tell you you have been given some wrong guidance in the class it's always understanding those problems in different ways in the tutorials which is the discussions sessions that you have like the flash drills there we discuss problems and then you have to solve a lot of books okay so understand guys so extract abhishek is the concise way in which you will get all the summary formulas definitions etc for revision of that chapter so let's start with projectile motion are you guys ready? Yes, Chinmi says, Chini says ready, Kushi says ready. Yes, Jumna says ready, Krito is also ready. Leonardo does doing projectile. Wow. Okay, okay. 
Asim is ready. Very good. Divya is also ready. Abhishek. Okay. Sonu is also ready. Very good. Very good. Anthony. Anika. Abhishek. Very good. Very good. Very good. Sai ready. Very good. So let's start this. Now, first of all, yes, we have now entered two dimensional motion, guys. Let me tell you about that. Before this, we have completed 1D. And those of you who are wondering, sir, what about integration? Do not worry, guys. I know it. I am planning a session for it. First, let's get done with the basic kinematic stuff and then I'll come to integration. I'm going to scale up your level slowly. I'm not going to bombard you with difficult problems initially. Okay. That being said, now understand whenever I say projectile motion, a lot of people think, okay, you throw something at an angle, then it is called as a projectile motion. Wrong. Understand projectile motion is anything which is just thrown in air. It could be even dropping an object. It falls down. That is also projectile. Throwing a ball up, that is also projectile. So, when you throw a ball down or throw a ball up, that is called as vertical projectile motion, which we have clearly seen in our 1D kinematics chapter. Everybody remembers that? Yes? Very good. Very good. Very good. So, what is this chapter all about? It's all about oblique projectile or even horizontal projectile. Maybe the diagram didn't come, but let me draw it for you guys. So what is horizontal projectile? You are standing on a hill and you throw a ball like this. Okay. Horizontally. Yes. So that is nothing but a horizontal projectile. You are kicking that ball or throwing that ball horizontally. It goes like that. So oblique projectile, horizontal projectile. These are different forms of projectile. Understand. Now, when we solve these problems, we were only worried about the Y axis. We never really bothered about what is happening in the X because the ball never changed its x coordinate right there was no x displacement and there was no x acceleration right so only thing that we are worried about is the vertical motion now in two dimensional motion you have to worry about two different axes so something is going to happen in y axis something is going to happen in x axis you think and tell me acceleration due to gravity acts in the y axis or in the x axis come on guys i'm reading your chats Yes, it's 2D motion, Siva. Yes. Is acceleration due to gravity happen in y-axis or in x-axis? Very good. Now, do you know the purpose of taking x and y-axis perpendicular like this? The reason is whatever happens in y is only because of the things that affect y. And whatever happens in x is only because of things which happen in x. Meaning, the acceleration is on the y-axis. If something uh, like displacement or velocity along the y-axis has to be measured. Do not worry about any x-axis components or any x-axis acceleration or velocities. Only look at y-axis and all the velocities, accelerations, displacements will be related to each other. Same way in the x-axis, if you want to calculate anything, apply your kinematic equations, use accelerations, velocities, displacement, etc only in the x-axis they won't be affecting each other that's something which you should keep in mind okay that's very important now having said that okay that was horizontal projectile i think the diagram came just now anyways let's talk about resolution of vectors now i know don't worry you guys are not uh, niharika don't worry just join in you probably just missed one uh, some three minutes or something okay a lot of people teach vectors separately, but I have been telling this key vectors is actually a tool for solving problems. And let me tell you more about addition of or sorry, resolution of vectors. Now, what is the meaning of resolution of vectors? A vector is a quantity which has magnitude and direction. You can split a vector into two or more components, components as in parts, such that the individual split vectors give the same desired effect as the original effect or original vector meaning imagine I have one second imagine I have a vector like this this vector can be thought of to be made up of two or more vectors example this vector plus this vector plus this vector plus this vector plus this vector each of these vectors are called as components. What are these called? They are called as components. 
and the process of splitting this vector into small small vectors is called as resolution so this word resolution means splitting so splitting vectors is called as a resolution how many ways are there to split a vector numerous ways infinite ways to split a vector now there is no point splitting a vector in a very haphazard manner you have to split it in a very particular manner to make more sense of it like you can see the same vector has been split in different ways over here these blue dotted lines represent those components and the black one is your original vector please keep in mind to get the same desired effect as the original vector it's important you follow the same path as in wherever the head ends the tail should start of the next vector in case you do not know what the head and tail is let me tell you for this red vector over here this is the tail and this is the head of that vector the next vector's tail matches with the head it has to be a continued path only then you can split the vectors it's incorrect to have a vector like this and then i say okay it is this vector plus this vector plus this vector no it is not matching you have to bring it and see whether they actually end at the final point if it is not ending at the final point no then these three vectors are not the components of the original vector keep that in mind okay fine now which is more desirable for us understand these things when i split it all right so when i split a vector into many different ways these things are not so desirable because i cannot apply trigonometry and pythagoras only when you split it in this way such that this component component 1 and the second component 2 are perpendicular to each other then this original vector which is there has been split into two perpendicular components then i can apply trigonometry and pythagoras and i can apply many formulas that's when it becomes very useful and that brings me to this particular concept that when you split a vector you can split it like this and like this or sometimes people find it comfortable splitting it this way do not get confused by either one of them it's one and the same thing same way if i have a vector like this i can start from here and go here if i just slide this vector like this i will get the same diagram so some people find it comfortable writing it like this some people find it comfortable writing it in a triangle way so both are equivalent i hope this is very very clear is this clear let me know in the chat box joy of life come on concentrate yes sudhir sai reddy yes sunil everyone krito yeah is it clear everyone both ways of splitting are equivalent that's what you should understand very good now let me call these components as something let's say this is my vector v i will call the one along the x axis this is my x axis suppose this is my y axis suppose and this component which is along the x axis i'll call it vx this component which is along the y axis i'll call it vy because these are the same vectors as it is just shown in a very different way this vy is same as this vy understand that now if the original vector has a length of v this vx and vy can be easily written down imagine if i take this as the angle theta if i take this as the angle theta that means this angle is theta then think about it what is vx and what is vy vx is nothing but v cos theta and you can very easily see that by shifting this v below vx because vx by v will be adjacent by hypotenuse which is the definition of cosine theta i hope this is clear similarly vy is opposite to theta so it will be nothing but v sin theta and you can see that easily because if you shift v below vy by v will be opposite by the hypotenuse which is sin theta's definition all right i hope this is clear okay very good same thing applies here now the way in which you can do this really quick is 
whenever there is adjacent component like in this over here whenever there is adjacent component that adjacent component is always cos and whenever it is the other side component it is always sine component so the cos component is always the adjacent to the theta angle the sine is always the one which is farther all right i hope this is clear prija will be taking it up in the later stage during uh, when we do some more problems right first i want you to understand the basics of projectile and all that all right okay now what if i take this angle i take this angle as let's say phi then think about it this velocity is this vy component understand this is adjacent to the angle itself so that would be v cos phi and vx is far away from that phi and that's why it will be v sin phi understand that so understand lot of people remember x as cos and y as sin that's not correct get that in your head like you can see here y is cos and x is sin it depends on which angle is being taken if everybody is clear till this point let's go ahead yeah let's go ahead everyone okay now okay joy of life concentrate concentrate okay now let's talk about projectile motion observe this projectile i want you to observe this projectile what you will see is when you project something right let's say over here with some velocity and i call that velocity as u this velocity has two components one component along the x and the other component along the y there are two components i hope you can see that the y component i can call it uy and the x component i can call it ux the acceleration due to gravity although only acts down and if this is y if this is positive x think about it the acceleration in the x axis is zero whereas the acceleration in the y axis is minus g this is very important to know think why because there is no acceleration in the x axis so there is no component of acceleration in the x axis same way acceleration due to gravity acts vertically downwards since positive y is upwards so i am going to say acceleration in y is minus g cool very good very good i hope this is clear now yes i have taken upwards as positive because this is my y axis in case you did not realize it so understand this is my x axis this is my y axis and this is origin okay so this is where it is i don't want to put it over here because then the diagram will become very congested now notice how the x velocity is never changing why do you think x velocity is not changing do you see that arrow mark it never changes why is it not changing because of this guy x acceleration is zero but look at the y velocity the y velocity gradually reduces 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 becomes zero and then it increases 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 yes prija i have been telling this i'll take projectile motion on a incline later on don't spam the chat box okay first concentrate on this now here comes the next part because ax is zero understand because of this velocity in the x axis is always going to be constant as simple as that and because ay is minus g i'll say velocity in the y axis is obviously not a constant now think about it think about it guys if x velocity is constant it's only the y velocity which is changing and it is only being affected by gravity i feel that in the y axis it is actually doing vertical projectile motion is just that you are shifting it over here just observe this pen just observe this pen this pen goes up and comes down this is 1d or vertical projectile motion now 
let's say I do the same thing, but I am walking. All right, I'm walking and then I bring it up and bring it down. For me, believe me, it is 1D motion, but for you guys, it's a two dimensional motion. It looks like projectile. I hope this is clear. Is this clear guys? Look at that. For me, it is one dimension motion, but for you guys, it is two dimension motion. You can see that. Yes, very good. So that is what you are seeing over here. It's actually 1D projectile motion in the Y axis. In the X axis, it's constant velocity motion. In 1D projectile motion, didn't we see that the time taken to go up and time taken to come down is the same? Didn't we see that? Time taken to go up and come down is the same. So imagine if I slowly move and I take this pen going up and then I make this pen come down. So time taken to go up and time taken to come down will be the same. Very good. So hence, understand the time taken to go from here to here and time taken to go from here to here will be the same. So one of the important properties time taken to go up is equal to time taken to go down. Next, at maximum point, at maximum height, if this is basically your max height, what is the special condition over there? Look at that. Is the velocity zero? Wrong Madhvi, think again. Velocity is not zero, velocity is there. Which velocity is there? X velocity is still there. Think about it again. X velocity never goes away, it's constant. So at that topmost point, X velocity is still there. It's only the Y velocity which disappears. Look at that at the highest point. So it's only the Y component which is zero. Yes, only Y component is zero. Can I say the total speed is least at the topmost point? Why is it least? Because at every other point you have two components. But at the topmost point you only have one component. Again when it comes down you have two components. Can I say this is the least speed? So this is when it reaches minimum speed in that entire path. Can I also say that it has reached minimum speed? Yes, very good. So from here to here speed decreases and from here to here speed increases. So from here to here I can say the speed is decreasing and from here to here I can also say that the speed is increasing. So these are so many pointers that we learned about projectile motion. Very important. Yes, very important to know all this or else you'll find it very difficult. Yes, we are going to cover complete, complete syllabus guys. Don't worry, joy of life. Yes. Yeah, it has very high potential energy as well. So keep all this in mind and I hope you're also making notes when I do this. Now, let's talk about some different properties of projectile motion. Say for example, we have talked already about maximum height. We have talked about time of ascent being time of descent. We have talked about horizontal velocity remaining constant. We have talked about at the topmost point, the speed is minimum. All these things we have done. Yes, we are going to do der derivations once again. Now, my point is, let's say I take some point over here and I want to know if this is t is equal to zero and if this is t is equal to t, then what is the velocity at this point? If I want to know the velocity at this point, I need to know two components. One is Vx and the second component that I need to know is obviously Vy. I need to know both these components, only then I can find the total velocity. Now how do I find this total velocity? It's totally up to me because time is given. So think, guys, I just told you whatever happens in x depends on x. Whatever happens in y is because of the y. So can I not say Vy is Uy plus Ay t. This is what? First equation of kinematics. So this is first equation of kinematics. But it is in the y direction. That's it. So it's the first equation. That's all. So this is the first equation of kinematics in the y direction. Similarly, one can also write Vx is Ux plus Ax plus Ax into t in the x direction. Same thing but in the x direction. That's all. I hope this is very very clear. Is this clear? What we have done? So think about it. 
if it was initially projected with u what will be the x component guys remember this is theta if this is the angle of projection of that projectile because it is adjacent to it the other component is far away from it so ux will be u cos theta and what will be ui guys think about it ui will be u sin theta yes this will be u cos theta this will be u sin theta so what is u u is called as the speed of projection remember that these are all useful for solving pro problems theta is the angle of projection with horizontal of course okay with the horizontal now let's apply these equations what will you get ui what is ui it is just u sin theta so it is u sin theta ay what will be the value of ay guys think about it what will be the value of acceleration in the y-axis think about it what will be the acceleration is it plus g or minus g negative g very good it will be minus g into t that's how you will find vy that's how you will find vy then once this vy is found how do you find vx oh that's very easy ax is zero so that's it it is just ux and what is ux we just figured it out it was u cos theta and this is zero remember that there is no acceleration in the x-axis very good so this is how you find the both the components at any time and immediately you can find the net velocity remember do not forget the total velocity is root of vx square plus vy square by pythagoras you can always use that amazing i hope you guys understood this how you can apply kinematics in 2d yes you can apply kinematics not just in 1d in 2d and 3d also if there was something in z you use vz is uz plus azt that's 3d nothing else you want to use second equation yes use that sx is uxt plus half x t half x t square you can use any kinematic equation in any axis provided acceleration is constant in that direction otherwise you can't very good very good nice symbol mayank okay very good krito very nice chinmay chandra okay these are different ways in which you can solve questions yes yes bahut hi very good jumna madhvi very good yo now let's find time of flight quickly let's get to some problems and let's quickly solve these uh, derivations as well okay now for finding time of flight what do you mean by time of flight the time it stays in air so this is when you project t is equal to zero it slowly decreases the speed y component becomes zero and it comes down over here and this is basically t is equal to t so this t stands for the time of flight so this is my time of flight so how do i find this time of flight okay here is my logic see here is my logic let's think what is the coordinate of this point well it will have some x coordinate but the y coordinate is zero correct the y coordinate is zero do you see that very good so if i just concentrate on the y-axis displacement as the particle goes up and comes down the y displacement is zero think about it yes so the y displacement is zero so here is what i'm going to say displacement in the y-axis is zero next acceleration in the y-axis is minus g because upwards is positive right side is also positive so downwards will be negative next initial velocity in the initial velocity in the y-axis think about it what will it be use this is cos this is sine this is far away from it so it is u sine theta so what equation do i use which equation do i use we will use second equation guys yes sy is uy t plus half a y t square let's use this sy is zero ui is u sine theta t plus half minus g into t square do not forget t cannot be cancelled i have to take it common so i'll get t common outside over here sine theta and u are inside and i obviously have that minus sign going there and that g by 2 of of course and all, always this 
one t is remaining. Okay, so now I have two solutions, like always, because it's a quadratic equation. So therefore, t is zero, or you know, this whole term is zero. So u sine theta minus g t by two is zero. But I don't think I'm bothered about this so much. Okay, fine, Devas, I won't use blue, no problem. Madhvi, y is zero because the y coordinate is zero, no? You know no? how to find coordinates of any point, x, y. So this is lying on the x-axis. So what is the coordinate? Zero. So what is the displacement? Not distance, displacement. And this s always stands for displacement, not the distance. Please keep that in mind. Yes, t cannot be zero, nahi. no, that's not correct, Devash. t is zero is not what we desire. So I don't care about this. Even at time zero, displacement is zero. Think about it. So that is one of the solutions, but I am interested in this guy. So that will be the other solution. So u sine theta will be gt by two. Rearrange, you will get the answer. I'll just write it over here. So what will be the time that I'll get from here? It will be two u sine theta, two u sine theta, that g comes down over here. So that is the formula. So that's the formula. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear, guys, everyone. Amazing. So that was time of flight. Let's go to the next derivation. Keep this in mind. I hope you have written it down at least 10 times. Remember, for attending my lectures, keep a notebook handy. Yes, and keep writing down these formulas. Palimnel, I have already told, projectile motion on incline will be taught later on. First, you understand these problems. We are going to slowly scale up the portion. Don't worry. I'm going to teach everything. I'm going to teach everything. But my system will be a little bit different. It will make sure you get confidence. Okay? Okay. Now, for maximum height, let's use this fact. Ui is zero. Let's find maximum height, guys. Because at maximum height, we just saw. Okay. One second. Yeah, the velocity at the topmost point is zero. So let's do everything in the y-axis. So what is there in the y-axis? Let's think about it. Uh, U, oh sorry, this should be not just Uy, this should be Vy. And here, this part is Uy. And what is Uy? It is U sine theta. So that's Uy. Also, Ay is minus g. And Think about the coordinates of this point. The coordinates of this point, guys, what will it be? H comma, sorry, H is the Y coordinate. So X comma H. X is the X coordinate and H is the Y coordinate. So this Y coordinate is also the displacement in the Y axis. Look at that, displacement in the Y axis. So SY is basically plus H. I hope, I hope this is clear. Now, just substitute SY. Oh, which equation do I use? Uh, I think I'll use the third equation. Yes, VY square is UY square plus 2AY SY. Let's use this equation. What is VY? We just saw that it is zero at the topmost point. UY is u sine theta, but I have to square it. So u square sine square theta plus 2 a y. What is a y? It's minus g. And what is s y? Well, it is h. So bring this guys over here. So it will become 2 g h is equal to u square sine square theta. And just rearrange this equation. You will get h is u square sine square theta by 2 g. That's the final answer. And if you still don't believe me, no problem. Just put the value of theta as 90. Theta is 90 means that this has been projected like this. So this point will be there. So what will be the maximum height? Put sine 90. What is sine 90? 1. What formula will you get? U square by 2G. Wasn't that your original formula? In fact, in all the projectile, inclined projectile, oh, sorry, this oblique projectile problems, if you put theta as 90, you always get back the 1D projectile formulas. Remember that. Okay, very good. So that was maximum height. Then let's go to range. Now, range is how far it lands from the original point. Now, this point over here. Just 
one second. This point over here has the coordinate r, comma zero. R is the x coordinate, y coordinate is zero. So what do I find? What do I do for range? It's very simple. Think about it. The displacement in the x direction will be the range. When the particle, when the particle goes from here to here, the displacement in the x direction will be the range of that projectile. Acceleration in the x-axis is zero. Time taken will be time of flight, which is 2u sin theta by g, which we just derived some time back. Why it is this? Because I have to wait for the entire time so that this coordinate shifts till here. So to get the range, I have to wait for the complete time. Now, what will you do? Sx, Ax, T, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so using Sx is equal to ux t plus half Ax t square. Okay, so Sx is a range ux. I just know what ux is. ux will be u cos theta guys. And that will be u cos theta into time. Just substitute this to u sine theta by g. Let's collect few terms. Okay, let's collect few terms. So I'll collect u square first. u is here as well as here. And I have that 2 and that sine theta as well as cos theta together and that divided by g and that's it 2 sin theta cos theta is a formula which you would have studied in maths else you will study it later on don't worry in trigonometry it is sin 2 theta so it is sin 2 theta understand that by g that's the formula for range so r is u square sin 2 theta by g and for max range if you want to project it for maximum range, what you will do is, you cannot change u. You are throwing it with same speed at different, different angles. G, obviously, you cannot change your planet. So the only thing you can change is sine 2 theta. And we all know the maximum value of sine 2 theta is 1. So understand sine 2 theta is 1. In fact, that's the maximum value of sine 2 theta. And when is sine 2 theta 1? When 2 theta is 90. That means theta is 45 degrees. Very important. Very important. Rajesh, this is an English channel. Please keep in mind. So I'll be talking in English only. So we enthuse is an English channel for J aspirants. Please keep that in mind. So we are not going to use Hindi over here. Okay, Mike, come on, concentrate. Well, Kushi, I hope you understood. Yes, Rito, you cannot change your planet. You found that funny? Very good. Chalo, let's go ahead. Yes. Now, let me tell you another interesting fact over here. And that is going to be useful. Once again, I'm coming to equation of trajectory. Don't worry. And, okay, remember one thing. If you project something at 45 degrees, the range is maximum, correct? So this is the maximum range you can get at 45 degrees. But what happens if you project it at some other angle? Well, let's say you project it at some angle like this, then it will fall somewhere over here. But if you choose an angle complementary of that, even then you can try it out with different values you will see the projectile falls at the same point. Yes, for complementary angles like 30, 60, 37, 53, 20, 70, the range is the same. And if you choose a much lower angle, well, the range will be even smaller. But if you choose a very large angle, then it will stay in air for a long time, but it will hardly move anything and it will fall at the same point. So understand for complementary angles, Range is same. This is another property which you should know. And you can try it out. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Okay? You can try it out. You will be amazed to know that the range will be same. And there are problems on that in the drills. Yes, which I'm going to discuss tomorrow. Okay. Now, let's go to the next point. <coughs> 
equations of motion now equation of trajectory which is called now what is the meaning of the word trajectory let me tell you that first so trajectory means path and equation of trajectory so if it says equation of trajectory it means a function only in x and y and z coordinates if there is z but there is no z here so i'm not putting it so some function only in x and y that is called as equation of trajectory there will be no time in it so somehow let's eliminate time how do we eliminate time let's have a look at it at some instant over here this is some time instant the particle has been projected it has some velocities and it also has some y and the x coordinate here is what i can do if i use think about it if i use in the y direction okay if i use sy is equal to uy t plus half ay t square sy which is the displacement of this point in the y axis which is the y coordinate itself it will be y ui is the velocity in this direction which is u sin theta well time i'll take care of it in a bit hold on plus plus half into ay acceleration remember is downwards so it is minus g because upwards is taken as positive and there is one more time over here okay i'll worry about it in a bit i'll understand why i'm putting a bracket over here in a bit remember i just told you equation of trajectory never has time so i have to eliminate time how do i eliminate time well that's simple concentrate only on the x axis if you look at the x axis the displacement of this particle in the x axis is just x so if i use sx is equal to ux t plus half ax t square what will you get displacement in the x axis is just x nothing else ux guys is just u cos theta into t and remember ax was zero there is no acceleration in the x axis from this i'll get time as x divided by u cos theta correct i'll get time as x by u cos theta i can oh sorry uh, yeah x divided by u cos theta uh, i hope you can see that right and in case uh, sorry i will not uh, use uh, a blue color next time i forgot that yes it's not visible yes yes sorry sorry i will not use blue sorry okay so the word projectile vidhi has started uh i have given the definition at the start of the session right anything which you throw in air is called as projectile no matter what angle you throw it, it is always called as a projectile motion okay so this whatever we are studying oh my god i just made it disappear uh okay anyways i just remember it in the y direction it was y i was using sx sy is equal to uy t plus half ay t square so sy was y ui will be u sin theta t will be i had found it out just some time back i believe that was uh, i think x by u cos theta i just found it out some time back right so in the x axis i had found out time was x divided by u cos theta and half ay ay is minus g and take this whole square so x by u cos theta whole square now just rearrange you will get the answer y is equal to well this u and this u cancels so x sin by cos tan theta minus from that g x square on the top to below and u is squared and cos is also squared you can see that i feel that this equation is quadratic equation quadratic equation look at this there is an x term here there is an x square term here and there are some constants over here right you can see that 
and even this are constants for a particular theta and u for a particular so that means what does it mean this path is nothing but a parabola because any quadratic equations graph is a parabola and notice the coefficient of the square term you would have learned this in quadratic if it is negative it is an inverted shaped parabola and because there is no constant term here it is passing through the origin oh sorry i forgot the g oh sorry 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 i forgot the g yes my bad g sorry okay is it clear this is a quadratic equation and it's a parabola let's start solving problems are you guys ready now are you guys ready okay so we have seen the trajectory of projectile please remember please remember these equations i hope you have written down all these formulas now problems are going to start okay let's see the first problem so you throw a ball a cricketer throws a ball and it hits the stumps so it's a problem on that all right so let's see what the problem is if you project it at zero obviously it will land there itself there is no point in that okay okay here is the first problem a fielder throws a ball at this speed at a point on horizontal which is 80 meters away from the wicket he throws it like this this is 80 meters away and the wickets are hit at what angle to the horizontal did he throw the ball okay what will you use what will you use think about it no problem madhvi okay what will you use think about it this distance this is where the wickets are this is where he throws the ball and he has thrown it with what speed 144 kilometers per hour come on what is 144 kilometers per hour in meters per second first convert that first convert 144 kilometers per hour in meters per second come on yes you'll have to use range formula first convert <coughs> what will it be guys 40 or 80 come on i'm waiting no problem quantum very good yes it is 40 meters per second multiply by 5 by 18 very good very good very good now once you get the speed as 40 meters per second what formula do we use range and the range is how much 80 meters okay so let's use the formula for range so range is u square sine 2 theta by g so range is 80 okay speed is 40 sine 2 theta divided by 10 okay so this 10 will go here it will become 800 and 40 square mind it it is uh, 1600 so that will become sine 2 theta therefore sine 2 theta will become 800 by 1600 is half so that means what is 2 theta think about it what is 2 theta what is 2 theta whose sign is half be careful yes it is 30 degrees that means answer is not 30 answer is 15 degrees be careful question is not to find 2 theta question is to find theta correct so the final answer will be 15 degrees so he has projected the ball at 15 degrees so easy so easy i hope you got this so easy let's go to the next problem then if you understood this so he has thrown the ball at 18 uh, sorry at 15 degrees okay so let's go and i think one more question was there in that oh yes what is the maximum height how will you find maximum height <clears throat> yes maximum height was u square sine square theta by 2g use this use this u will be well i just told you u was 40 sine square but sine square of 15 2 
into g g is 10 now you need to know the value of sine 15 without that you cannot do else if you do not know then i'll tell you one formula you will learn that in maths or you would have already learned it cos 2 theta is 2 sine square theta minus 1 so put that one here so it will become cos 2 theta plus 1 is 2 sine square theta so hence think about it 2 sine square 15 will be cos 2 times of 15 how much it is cos 30 plus 1 so you can substitute 2 sine square, sine square 15 as cos 30 plus 1 and uh, do i have sine square 15 no but i can bring this 2 down like this and just substitute it here so it will become 40 square which is 1600 divided by 20 into sine square 15 is nothing but 1 plus cos 30 divided by 2. You do the rest, you'll get the answer. Yeah, you do the rest, you'll get the answer. So you can simplify this, it's not that difficult. Okay, you can simplify this. So 20 into 40 and this will become 40. So you'll get the answer then. I hope this is clear. Yeah, you can rationalize whatever you want to do. Yes very good very good very good very good even our channel managers are saying you guys are very well focused very good very good very good let's go ahead then so you'll get this as the answer 20 into 2 plus root 3 that will be the final answer i've kept it in case you want to solve it further let's solve the next question come on let's solve the next question you throw a stone two times and every time you throw at a different angle you see that it falls at the same point that means read carefully a stone thrown from the ground at 30 degrees with the horizontal hits another point which is this much away the second trial also falls at the same place what is the difference in the time period what is the difference in the time period now the first thing that you should understand that because it falls at the same place that means the angles of projection are complementary very good Saurabh very good very good very good Chinmay very good yes oh I think I made a blunder in the previous slide I'm so sorry guys yes I made a blunder I'm so sorry uh, while uh, writing cos to theta by mistake i wrote it as 2 sine square theta minus 1 i'm so sorry i should have written it down as 1 minus 2 sine square theta i'm so sorry so please keep in mind that it was 1 minus 2 sine square theta i'm just correcting it i'm so sorry i just realized it right now and uh, then accordingly you'll get a completely different answer okay fine i hope this is clear i'm just making that correction right away okay now let's go to the next thing huh here the angles are complementary so that's why the range is same so let's do this problem and let's see what do we get okay so he's throwing the ball at 30 degrees and hits another point which is 20 root 3 meter away so let's use range formula range formula is u square sine 2 theta by g the range is given to be 20 root 3 u is not given in fact i think i'll have to find it out sine 2 theta well i have to find where is the angle theta is it given yes 30 degrees so it will be sine of 2 multiplied by 30 degrees divided by 10 therefore it will become 20 root 3 is equal to u square sine 60 guys think about it is root 3 by 2 right sine 60 is root 3 by 2 and divided by 10 now this root 3 and this root 3 gets cancelled and this 20 and this 20 gets multiplied so it will become 20 square is u square therefore u is equal to 20 meters per second so i have found out the speed now i found out the speed and the two angles are first time it is 30 next time it is 60 degrees to get the same range now once i know the angles are 30 and 60 what do i do think about it what do i do i'll find t1 
and I'll also find T2. That's it. So just find T1 and T2, you'll get the answer. So what is T1? T1 is 2 u, u is uh, 20 into sine 30 divided by g, g is 10, that's time T1. Similarly, you will get time T2 as 2 into 20 into sine 60 divided by g. Now, everything else is substitution. This zeros go, this is 4 and sine 30 guys is half. So half into 4 is just, I believe, 2 seconds. And this T2 will be, think about it, this 0, 0 goes. Sine 60 is root 3 by 2. And this 2 and this 2 goes, so it will become 2 root 3. So the difference in the times, T1 and T2, what will it be? 2 root 3 minus 2. You can take that 2 common, and it will become root 3 minus 1. That's the answer. Very good. Some of you have got the answer faster than me. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I hope you guys are enjoying these problems. There are more. Are you guys enthu about it? Are you guys enthu? We are going to do a lot of problems. Are you guys enthu? Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go to the next problem. Next problem is very interesting. Very tricky also. Watch the video carefully. Okay, if you want to drink some water, please go ahead and drink. Yes, there is going to be a footballer and who is going to hit the ball and we have to figure out whether the ball enters inside the goal or it doesn't enter. Okay, some of you already identified the player as well. So here is the thing, a football is kicked from the ground at a speed of 20 at an angle of 37 with horizontal. A goal post 16 meters away is three meters high. Will a goal be scored or not? Will a goal be scored or not? Let's see. So let's draw the diagram first. Here is the diagram. And uh, let me bring back our pen. Okay. Now, think about it. If this ball is projected with a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees. Now, what I need is, if this ball enters into the goal, then its Y coordinate, yes, its Y coordinate must be lesser than the goal post height. What is the goal post height? 3 meters, it's given, it should be less. By chance, for example, the ball does not go inside the goal, then the Y coordinate will be more than the value which is 3. So I feel it's not a question on range, it's not a question on maximum height, it's a question on, guess what? What is the question? Be based on which equation? Which equation do you think it is based on? Not time. Time has got nothing to do with it. Think again. Height, no. Trajectory equation, very good. It's a question on trajectory equation. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to assume that at x is equal to 16 meters, at x is equal to 16 meters, I'm just going to find what is the y. That's it. I'm just going to find what is the y. Now, I don't know how much is that y. So let's just use the trajectory equation. So what was our trajectory equation? y is equal to x tan theta minus half g x square by u square cos square theta. That's what it was. Yes, trajectory equation. Now, what is y? In fact, that's what I need to find. What is x? 16. What is tan theta? Okay, I need tan of 37. In case you don't remember the values, just remember the triangle, which I'm going to draw. This is 37, okay? This is 3, this is 4, this is 5. So tan 37 will be 3 by 4. Remember this triangle. 
Okay, this is 3 by 4. So tan 37 is 3 by 4 minus half. What is G? 10. What is X? X, 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 S is 16. Okay. And divided by, what is U? 20. Okay. Square. Cos square theta. That means cos 37. Cos 37 will be 4 by 5. So it will be 4 by 5 whole square. Come on. Calculate this. This 4 and this 16 will go partially. It will become 12 minus. You can cancel out few things and see what you get as the answer. I know the answer. Yes, some of you already got it. Very good. Kya baat hai? Very good. Very good. Excellent. Come on, come on, come on, come on. See what do you get. Y comes out as PDF of entire thing is basically the blank slide. You will not get all these written things. So that's why you need to attend the classes. Sudhirti, okay? Okay, yes, seven meters, guys. Seven meters is the answer. Very good. Now, is 7 meters more than this or not? So, the y coordinate is here. This is y is equal to 7. Will the ball go inside the goal post? Will the ball go inside the goal post? Yes or no? Yeah, 16 square. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 16 square. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sonu. Thank you, Sonu. Yeah, 16 square. Nope. Correct. And that's why I have the next GIF for you. It won't go. Misses by 4 meters. Yes, Sankar, this is advanced level. I'm going to train you right from mains to advanced. There's no point just going to advanced. Because a lot of people just directly go to advanced level. Most complicated problem. And you just feel, wow, 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 teacher knows so much. But I can show you off my knowledge by taking very cool problems in very cool ways. But you should understand it. You should understand it. That's what is important. Okay. Now let's talk about horizontal projectile. Horizontal projectile. Okay. Horizontal projectile means you throw it horizontally from a height. It falls somewhere. It falls somewhere. Okay. Great. Great. So, same concepts are repeated. Guess what horizontal projectile is? It's a complete projectile's half part. What is horizontal projectile? This is a complete projectile. It's just looking at half part of it. That's it. I hope this is clear. Guys, I'm going to conduct the lecture for more 10 to 15 minutes. Because this, pro uh, this projectile topic is a little bit big. I hope you are going to be with me. Even if it takes a little bit more time, I hope you guys are going to be with me. Yes? Okay. Yes, everything just gets divided by 2. But what will be given to us is not please understand you will not be given this point's velocity no in fact you will be just given this guy's velocity u yes at this points so how do you find how much time it takes to fall down or what's this range it's very simple let me tell you this let me tell you this it's very simple to find how much time it takes to fall down here is the hint guys when you want to find the time of flight and you already know that this height of the tower from where you are kicking the ball and it falls here on the ground. If this height is known, I think you know many things in the y direction. U y, because you are projecting it horizontally, horizontal projection, no vertical velocity. So U y is zero and because y is positive up, x is positive towards the right. So displacement guys is negative. Please understand that displacement is minus H. I hope this is clear and acceleration. Please understand because it is accelerating downwards. So it is plus G. No Sunil, I won't be talking in Hindi because a lot of people over here won't understand Hindi. The purpose of this channel was to make sure you learn in English because finally at the end of the day, the paper is going to be conducted 90% of the times in English only. Okay. And when you enter engineering, you have to learn to converse in English. And when you enter into companies also, you have to learn to converse in English. Understand. That's the reason why we have started this channel for all those English speaking crowds. Okay. Yes. Which equation do we use? S Y U Y. I think, yeah, to time of flight. S Y is U Y T plus half A Y T square. Great. So, 
sy is minus h, ui is 0, ay is minus g and time square. So this minus and this minus cancels. So h is equal to gt square by 2. So arranging this equation further, I'll get the time as 2h by g and the root of it. Is this formula familiar to you? Why displacement is negative? Because this was initial position, this was final position. When you draw the vector, the y component of the displacement is negative because upwards is positive. Yes, 1D projectile. So guys, when you throw the ball like this, it will fall at the same time as a ball which is dropped. Yes, a ball which is dropped falls at the same time at which a ball is just thrown horizontally because when you throw the ball horizontally, understand there is no y component. And when you drop the ball, also there is no y component. So yes, both of them would fall at the same time because their y characteristics are the same. Everything, the y characteristics are the same, correct. So that was time of flight. What about the range? Well, that is the easiest one. How? Think about it. This range, which is there, think about it. If I take this as my x and y axis, and let's say this velocity of projection is u, then understand that this range is the x displacement. Yes, this range is nothing but, no, it is not r by 2. Yes, it is r by 2 if you consider the entire thing. But I don't know the velocity here, no? I know the velocity here. So in terms of this u, we are trying to find it out. So this range, how do we find it out? Here is the idea. Displacement in x-axis is r. Look at that. When the ball goes here, the displacement in x-axis is r. ax is 0. ux is u only because it was projected horizontally. Which equation do I use? Oh, and one more thing. Time is the time of flight. Because from here to here, how much time it takes? Total time, think about it, t, which we just found out before. Okay, I hope this is clear. So let's use this. Sx is ux t plus half ax t square. So what is Sx? It's r. What is ux? It's u. What is t? The time of flight, which we just found out to be root of 2h by g, where this much is my height h. So it will be root of 2h by g plus, what is this guy? 0, because ax is 0. ax is 0. So therefore, range is u into root of 2h by g. So you are supposed to memorize this as well. Kushal, which part you didn't understand? Please let me know. Please let me know. So when the ball goes from here to here, the x displacement is r, x displacement. The time taken to go from here to here is the total time of flight, which we just figured it out in the previous slide. And the horizontal velocity will be u only because I'm throwing it that way. That's all. I hope this is clear. Kushal, Amazing Chinni, Krito, Siddharth, Sruti. Which part of it, Kushal, Malab, tell me. So this part is equation of motion in 1D in x-axis. I'm substituting ux is u, time as the total time of flight. ax will be 0 because no acceleration in the uh, x-axis. I hope this is clear. Okay, Rishab, Quantum, Mohammad. Total range is this only. Range is always measured from the foot of the hill, not this. You are projecting it from here. Range is always measured from the foot of the hill, unless specified otherwise. Okay, Asim. Okay, Quantum. Okay. Okay, Uday. Very good. Why h is negative? Because think about it. You started from here. You ended here. This is positive, right? So initial is here. Final is here. So what is my displacement? This way, right? So what is a y displacement? Like this. So isn't it negative? So, guys. Think about this problem. Quickly answer. Quickly answer. If three balls are thrown, red, blue, green, red is dropped, blue is thrown with some speed, green is thrown with very large speed, 
which one will fall fastest on the ground which one will fall fall fastest on the ground Weber, which part you did not understand please let me know in the chat box type your proper doubt red green blue yes velocity of impact we can find it out i'll tell you what to do okay there was same guys same think about it for all three of them understand u y is zero yes all of them have ux ux is not zero right ux may be there may not be there but don't worry about it but acceleration in the y-axis is also the same minus g and no matter where this ball goes and lands the displacements are the same in the y-axis sy is minus h think about it so what will differ then nothing will differ their times yes guys will be the same if you use sy is uy t plus half a y t square i just told you that time of flight is independent of that speed it was just root of 2 h by g so if you throw a ball horizontally or if it falls down it will have the same speed oh sorry same time of flight i hope those of you who had doubts in the previous part has now understood some bit more is that clear okay now to find the velocity of impact it's very simple in the x direction think about it this x velocity will never change so if you throw it with certain velocity u the x velocity will always remain u the only additional velocity that will come is that y velocity and the resultant of both of them will be v and you can find that v by taking u square plus vy square u is basically that horizontal speed with which you have projected it remember initially there was no y velocity u you already know how will you find out vy how will you find out vy it's very simple use this vy square is uy square plus 2 ay sy what is ui zero because there was no speed in the vertical direction initially plus what is ay minus g what is sy displacement in the y-axis this is initial final point is there in the y-axis it is minus h so it is minus h over here that's it so you will get vy square as 2gh and you can use this formula over here so it no longer remains a question mark that's how you find it out very good very good Koi baat nahi, chini, no problem let all the books get over but you're learning that's what is important okay is this clear very nice jokes you guys have very good very good keep it alive guys keep it alive very good okay last question because i had promised you i'm going to tell you how to drop the bomb last question are you guys ready are you guys ready ay is minus g asim because vertically up is positive gravity acts down so that's why gravity acceleration is negative i hope asim that's clear ready let's see the problem a plane flying with a speed of 300 meters per second at an altitude of half kilometer has to drop a bomb targeting a military installation on the ground find the horizontal distance from the target at which the bomb has to be dropped okay find the horizontal distance okay so let me first draw the diagram so that you get a hang of it so this is our plane all right and let's say this is our ground this is that military installation this is our target this plane is moving with a speed of 300 meters per second and this altitude is half a kilometer which is nothing but 500 meters that plane has to drop a bomb and that bomb has to go and correctly hit over here 
has to go and hit over here. So the question is, how much distance before the target, this distance, should the plane drop the bomb so that it hits it? Think about it. When you drop the bomb, won't the bomb also get the velocity of the plane? Yes or no? Won't the bomb get the velocity of the plane? Yes? So, think about it. Think about it, guys. Because the plane is already carrying that bomb. Isn't this problem similar to... Isn't this problem similar to standing on a hill and throwing a bomb with a speed of 300 at a height of 500 meters such that the range is to be found? Isn't these... Are these two problems exactly identical? Yes? So, what do you have to do? Just find the range. So, what is the formula for range? I just gave you. Think about it. It was u into root of 2h by g. u was horizontal speed. Root of 2h by g was time. That's it. That's what I had given you some time back. What is u? 300. What is this inside? It's 500 and g is 10. 2 into 500 is 1000, 1000 by 10 is 100, root of 100 is 10, 10 into 300 is 3000 meters, but we can give the answer in kilometers, so this answer will be 3 kilometers, yes, 3 kilometers before the plane will drop the bomb and it will hit the target, so that guy will be seeing the target somewhere there and he would have left the bomb 3 kilometers before and then it's going to hit it, isn't it amazing? Look at the calculations. Very good. Now it looks easy. Oh, by the way, I have a very cool animation for all of you. This is how it looks like from the ground. Huh? This is how it looks like from the ground. But for the pilot, it is just a vertical motion. Look at that. Look at that. From the ground, it looks like a horizontal projectile. But from the pilot's point of view, it looks, when you drop the bomb, like a vertical motion. So, remember frame of reference de decides the type of motion. So, from ground frame it is projectile motion, oblique or horizontal. And from the planes frame it is just vertical free fall motion. So, don't you mind your language or else you'll be blocked. I would request the channel manager to block people who are going to spoil this session. Yes, that's a pro pilot Pandu. And Guys, today's session was amazing. I loved it. Look at the calculations. Look at the problems we solved. Look at the footballer problem. Look at the cricketer problem. Look at the pilot's problem of dropping bombs. It was so amazing. Didn't you feel that? Didn't you feel that? And if you want the drills, please do not forget. Please do not forget to go and hit this link in the description box below where you will get all the drill assignments, the DPPs, all the announcements and everything and do not forget to like if you have enjoyed the session do not forget to share if you want to spread the joy and subscribe if you're a new user all right well at what age did i start teaching i want to do a personal interaction with all of you i i think i should do a live session with you on instagram how about that guys on instagram yeah i will do a session on instagram sometime later maybe yes yes no problem, I'll do that. I'll tell you everything about me. Okay, very good. So, we'll do something and let me promise you we are coming out with something really cool next week. Wait for it. Stay tuned. How to plan everything, we are going to tell you very quickly. Just stay tuned for a few more days, okay? Bye-bye. Yes, everything about books, how to study and everything. Okay. So guys, if you want to follow for more videos which I have put up, by the way, I have put up a very cool video. I don't know how many of you saw it. Do not forget to see Shreyas underscore Vedantu. Okay? Chalo. Bye-bye, guys. I've taken a lot of time, but it was worth it, I feel. Bye-bye. See you. Take care. Stay safe and stay at home.